Welcome to the Woodlands Christian Church Children's Virtual Sunday School. I'm Miss Susan, and today's lesson is the parable of the sheep and goats. If you remember, there were a lot of sheep and goats in the time of Jesus. Many of the stories were about shepherds. The people used the animal's wool for clothing and milk for drinking, as well as the meat for eating. So everyone was familiar with sheep and goats. They were often in the same flock to graze on the grass, but they were separated when it came time to cut the wool. They have different characteristics. Sheep usually follow the shepherd and stay with their flock eating grass, very content. Goats, on the other hand, are a little more independent, curious, eating anything and climbing everywhere. Sometimes they can cause a bit of trouble. In this story, Jesus is referring to the believers that follow him as the sheep and the people that did not believe and that were kind of bad people as the goats. This parable is from Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 through 46. It's a long parable but a very important one. I'll give you a minute to find it in your Bible. I'll be reading from the Illustrated Study Bible for Kids. Okay, I'm getting my glasses. The Sheep and the Goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another just as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or without clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, I assure you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. I was naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you didn't take care of me. Then they too will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or without clothes, or sick or in prison, and not help you? Then he will answer them, I assure you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me either. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Wow, that was quite a long story. But Jesus is nearing the end of his ministry, and the time of his death is coming. He wanted to make sure the people understood how important it was to love God and to love each other. Now, if you saw Jesus and recognized him, you would do anything to help him and make him comfortable. You'd feed him, give him clothes, give him a drink, care for him. Any of us would do that for Jesus. But he tells us to do that for everyone we meet. Everyone is a child of God, and we are to look after one another. We don't need to be rich or grown up or really smart to do what Jesus asks of us. These are simple things that we can do for someone in need of our help. 
Can you think of ways we care for others through our church? Well, we fix food for the women's shelter. We just finished donating lots of socks for people. We prepare toiletry bags to give to people who've had to leave their home. We recently sent prayer squares to soldiers who are away from home in another country. We make feely hearts for people in the hospital who might feel a bit scared at what's happening. And we've given stuffed animals to children in the hospital. See, there's many ways that we can help people in need as if we were helping Jesus. With your family, think of ways that you can care for others. How do we care for Jesus? Well, we can read about him in the Bible and the things he teaches us. We can share him with our friends. We can come to church and worship him with our church family. We can follow his teachings and do what he did. Love God and love one another. With your family, think of other ways you can care for Jesus. Now, in your packet, there's activities to do with your family, along with pages to color and some puzzles. And I've included a little notebook that you can use to write down ways you see to help others as if you were helping Jesus. I hope you have lots of things to write down. Will you pray with me? Jesus, we care for each other because we are part of your flock. Show us how we can help others. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Well, this was the last of our parable lessons. Next week is the first week of Advent, leading us to Christmas. We will follow the themes of hope, love, joy, and peace as we look at preparing for Christmas. I'll be teaching from the book, The Way to the Manger, a family Advent devotional by Jeff and Abby Land. There will be stories from the Bible and activities to do as a family. You will also be able to make an Advent wreath to have at home. Thanks for joining me today. See you next week. Bye-bye.